Welcome to a new video. The project you see here on the breadboard is a simple gas detector that triggers an alarm when certain conditions are met. You'll find the schematics at the end. When you power up the microcontroller, an ESP8266D1 Mini, the system waits a certain amount of time for the MQ-2 gas detector to heat up. The initial values read from the sensor are to be ignored because they're not accurate. I have set a 60 second timer just to be sure. The next step is to take a certain number of samples from the sensors. I'm using the plural because there's also a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Once all these readings are stored in memory, the system goes into the loop phase. The display is a classical OLED SSD 1306 128 by 64 pixels. As you see now, we have several readings. Most of them are moving averages as you see in the code. This means that when we take a new reading, we recompute the average on all readings, including the newer but excluding the older one. This avoids sudden spikes in values. Starting from the top, you'll see the voltage output from the gas sensor. The MQ-2, like other sensors from the MQ-2 series, has two outputs, analog and digital. The analog output gives us a very rough idea of the current gas concentration. This value is an integer between 0 and 1023. Using a very simple formula, you can transform it into volts. Here I kept six decimal digits to use all the available characters on the first line of the screen. The advantages of the sensors from the MQ Dash series is the price. You can find them for about 5 euros a piece on Amazon, and that's about it for the advantages. In fact, if you want accurate readings of gas concentrations, these sensors are not to be used. Let's see the datasheet for the MQ Dash 2 sensor for a moment. What I understood from this document and other resources on the internet is that measuring the ppm parts per million is influenced by factors such as the gas you want to measure, the temperature and the humidity. The first graph gives you curves for different gases with ppm values. If you look closely, you can see that the graph scales are not linear. In fact, they are logarithmic. The resistance values, Rs over R0, have been measured nine times for each gas against known ppm concentrations. The value on the y-axis is indirectly correlated to the reference voltage, input of 5 volts for this sensor, and the actual voltage sensor reading, the one on the display. If you are interested, someone did all the job to find a fitting curve for these gases, including the compensation for temperature and humidity. See also the second graph for this. Implementing these factors is certainly possible, but it would take time, and I'm really not interested in the ppm value. Like most people, I just want to trigger an alarm when the sensor detects a consistent amount of flammable gas in the air. Anyway, I'll leave all the links for these computations in the video description. Let's go back to the project. The second line is marked GT, gas tendency. If this integer is increasing, it means that the gas level is increasing, and when it's decreasing, the gas concentration is decreasing. This number gives you a rough idea of how the gas concentration is changing as time passes. Some very simple conditions are in place to smooth this value. For example, if two consecutive readings are the same, it resets to zero. You can trigger an alarm based on this value as well, but you should keep it high enough to avoid false positives. The temperature and humidity values are simply the moving average values measured from the DHT11 sensor. Like how the sensors of this series, the MQ-2 has a potentiometer to adjust its sensitivity. You can set it all the way clockwise or close to it, like I did here. You'll see the red LED turning on and triggering the digital output, thus the alarm. The final and obvious way to trigger the alarm is by using the analog reading, or in my case the voltage level computed starting from that reading. An important thing is to mitigate the OLED display burn-in. For this I implemented color inversion every 30 loops and a full display clearing as well. At the moment I haven't coded a Wi-Fi dashboard, but I moved the project to a mini breadboard and a plastic support so it's more stable. You'll see this in the next video. Before signing off, 
here's the schematics. A link to the keycard file is provided in the video description. Feel free to pause the video now. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.